What's up, y'all? Today, we're going to cover how you can get the best quality settings for your audio on stream. We're going to start out by going over some basic tips to level your audio, then lead into more advanced settings and filters that can really give your stream the edge. So let's get started. Before we dive in, I want to start off by saying that by no means am I an audio engineer. I've been a streamer for over a year now, and these are just some of the ways that I've found to really amp up your audio for a better experience. With that being said, some of these settings will be different for each person, so make sure to take the time to fine tune some of the settings to find what works best for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or drop by and see me on Twitch. You can find my link in the description below. The very first thing that I want to talk about is how to normalize your audio for your streams. This isn't something that I see talked about a lot, and it's left up for everyone to kind of figure out on their own, but we'll start by taking a look at our mixer. This bar represents how loud each device is for the stream. Whether it's your mic or your game sounds, it will show up here. Now let's break this bar down. I've divided the bar into guidelines for the general levels of your devices. When our devices make sounds, we want to take a look at where the bars fill to. This is what we want to adjust. On the lower end of the spectrum, we want our game sounds and our music. These levels are generally good for keeping them as background audio and helps create space for your foreground audio, like your mic. Now your mic is the most important audio source and it needs to be up front. This is where it hits the higher end of the spectrum. Just be careful not to let it get too high. If it goes into the red, it's called peaking and will make very unpleasant sounds. Typically, we want to keep it where it just slightly changes colors, but nothing higher. This will be the general layout for keeping your audio in proportion to each other. Once you have a good idea of how loud you have your audio, let's take a look at filters. We'll start out with our mic. Let's head over to the mixer and click the cog wheel beside our mic. Here we can click on filters. At the top left, we can click the plus button to add a filter. If we come over here to the drop down menu, we can see that there are a lot of options. To start with, I'll cover the basic settings using just Streamlabs OBS's built in filters. After that, I'll cover some more advanced settings to really give your audio a boost using VST plugins for extra control. If you're looking for ways to just get started, the basic filters are what you need. So let's start out with these basic filters. It does matter which order you use for the filters, so we'll start out with a noise gate. You can name the filter, but I'm going to go ahead and click done. A noise gate is used to cut out any background noise when you're not talking. This cuts out hums or static noises when you're quiet. So let's talk about what each of these settings means. To start with, we'll take a look at close threshold. The close threshold determines when to deactivate the mic. Anything below this won't get picked up. With this basic filter, there is no way to actually see what it'll cut, so you'll have to adjust this and check your recordings to see how well it works. Start with the default settings and work your way through. The open threshold determines when the mic activates. You want to set this to where your mic will pick you up even if you talk really low. The rest of these settings can just be left to default. Next, we're going to click the plus again to add a compression filter. We'll click on the drop down and add a compressor. Again, I'm going to leave the name the same and click done. A compressor basically turns anything down that is too loud. When a certain frequency in your voice gets too loud, it'll turn it down to normalize it, and you get to determine what is too loud. Let's take a look at the settings. The ratio determines how much to turn down the loud parts. For voices, we want to keep this around 3 to 5. Next up is the threshold. The threshold determines what is too loud. You can start with the default at negative 18 and adjust it depending on your mic. If you turn this down too low, it'll give off more of a robotic and process sound. The attack is how quickly it turns down the loud parts. We want a faster attack, so between 6 and 15 works. The release is how long it compresses the loud parts. We want a slower release, that way words that are more airy like duh and bruh are not cut off. Around 150 to 200 is good for this. 
The output gain is to make up for how much it is turning it down. If your compressor makes your voice too quiet, you can adjust this higher to make up for the volume loss. This will do it for our compressor. I'm going to add one more filter and this one is up to you. I'm going to add a noise suppression filter. This filter is to cut out some of the noises in your audio. You'll have to play around with this filter to determine what dB level is good for you. Too much suppression will make your voice sound really muddled, so fine tune this setting to your mic. Now this covers the basic settings using just the built-in filters for Streamlabs OBS. Now we're going to take a look at some advanced plugins that you can use. We'll start off by heading over to Reaper's VST page to download their plugins. I'll include a link in the description as well. Select the download for your operating system and then run the installer. Once installed, we'll head back over to Streamlabs OBS to add them in. Let's head back to our mics filters. For this, I've cleared all the filters that I've already added. We'll be replacing these with the VST plugins. Now, let's go ahead and add another filter. This time, in the drop down menu, we're going to select VST plugin. It is important to name each one of these. The first one we're going to use is a noise gate. This time, we'll see another drop down menu. Use the menu to select REA gate. Next, we'll click on Open Plugin Interface. Sometimes when you click this, it doesn't pull up the menu. Just double check your taskbar to see that it's been pulled up. From here, this looks very complicated. We're only going to be adjusting a couple of settings. Let's start by looking at the bar on the left side. When we speak, we see the bars move. There's a slider in between them, and that's how we'll set the noise gate. To do this, stop speaking and just let your mic pick up your background noise. Next, slide the slider up until it just goes over those bars when you're not speaking. Any sound that causes the bars to go over the slider will be picked up. You want to test yourself speaking to make sure the bars always go over the slider when you're speaking. If it doesn't, your voice will be completely cut out. It works the same as the Streamlabs OBS noise gate, except this way we get a visualizer to see where to set our threshold. Next, we're going to add another VST filter. Make sure when you close out of each filter, you also click on the close plugin interface. Sometimes this can cause a problem that'll require you to restart Streamlabs OBS just to open another plugin interface. The next VST plugin we're going to add is an equalizer. So we'll go ahead and name it and select done. In the drop down, we're going to be looking for REA EQ. Again, select open plugin interface. Before we get into all this, each voice is very unique and different. This is where you'll spend most of your time adjusting to get the right sound out of your voice. Since there isn't a one size fits all EQ, I'm going to go over some basics to give you a better understanding of an equalizer. I'll go step by step for what I use for my voice and explain everything I do to achieve this. Let's start by giving ourselves four more bands. Next, let's go back to our first band. For most people, we want to set this frequency to around 80. Most voices don't go lower than 80, so this will cut out any low sounds that might be picked up from your mic. We'll make sure to do this by selecting High Pass. The next band we'll cover is the bass in your voice. To target the bass, we'll set this between 100 to 300. For my voice, I use this closer to 100. If you want to give more bass to your voice, go ahead and drag the gain slider up. If you need more clarity, you can give this a cut by dragging this down. For voices, we try not to exceed a gain or cut of more than 5 decibels. For me, I'm going to give about a 3 decibel gain here. Next, we'll take a look at our third band. We want to set the frequency to around 400. If your voice sounds way too muddy and not as clear, you want to give this a cut. I'm going to give this a slight cut of around 3. On this band, we don't want it to affect our lower frequencies, so we need to adjust the bandwidth. The lower the bandwidth, the less frequencies it affects. On the next band, we want to make sure the type is set to band. 
Let's set this frequency to around 1.5 thousand. This is where we'll hear a lot of our room noises and we can give a slight cut here to increase clarity. Next, we're gonna hop over to our fifth band. We'll set this frequency to around three to 5,000. On this band, I'm gonna set mine to about 3,000. This is where we hear the sizzle in our voice. If you have too much sharpness, you can use a sharp cut to tone down the sizzle. This means we'll need to adjust our bandwidth as well. I'm gonna take this down about five, and then I'm gonna drag the bandwidth down to around 0.3. Now this gives us a sharper cut for certain frequencies. Next, we'll head over to our sixth band. We want to set this to around 6,000. This improves the brightness in your voice. If you don't have enough bass, you can cut here. If you want more clarity, you can give a boost here. For me, I'm going to give a slight boost of about two. And I'm going to take the bandwidth down just under one. Next, we're going to take a look at our seventh band and we'll set this to around 15,000. Since I gave myself more bass in the lower frequencies, I wanna give a slight boost here. I'll give myself about three and a half of a boost, and then I wanna bring down the bandwidth. Right around 1.10 will do it for me. And for our final in eighth band, we wanna set this type to high shelf. We'll set the frequency to around 19,000, and give this a sharp cut until it pulls the right side down. I'll drop the bandwidth to a little lower than one. And this cuts off the frequencies that are unnecessary for the mic. This wraps it up for the EQ settings that I use. This will be different for everyone, so make sure to spend some time cutting or boosting wherever necessary. Next, we'll be taking a look at our final filter for our voice, the compressor. We'll close out of the interface. And again, make sure to click on Close Plugin Interface. We're going to add another VST filter. This time, we're going to name the filter Compressor. In the drop down, we're going to select REA Comp. And then we'll click on Open Plugin Interface. The compressor is what gives our mics the smooth sounds. Whenever your voice goes over a set threshold or gets too loud, the compressor effectively turns down the loud parts. If you over compress, it starts to sound more robotic. On the left side, we'll see another slider. This will be our threshold. For my voice, I'm gonna start out at around negative 25 dB. For your mic, you might have to use a lower setting like negative 20, as I have my mic set a little lower in volume. Next, we're gonna take a look at the ratio. This determines how much the loud parts are lowered. And for voices, we don't wanna go higher than five. I'm gonna set this to a ratio of four. After that, we're gonna take a look at our attack and our release. Attack is how fast the compressor acts, and the release is how long it compresses. We'll leave the attack as default, as we want a faster attack. We want the release to be a little slower, somewhere around 400 milliseconds. Just to the left of the output mix section, we can see the bar that shows us how much our voice is being compressed. If it's set too high, start by adjusting your threshold to be around negative 15 or negative 10. This is all we have to do for our compressor settings. There are a lot more filters that you can use to really fine tune your voice, including the REA X Comp in the drop down menu. The REA X Comp allows you to have separate bands to compress different frequencies. I won't be covering this, but I do want to leave you with a great tip that you can add to really give your stream audio a boost. Let's close the plugin interface and close out of our filters for our mic. Let's open up our filters for our main or desktop audio for our sounds from our game or our music. We'll select filters, and this time we're going to add another EQ. Let's select VST and name this EQ. Again, we'll select the drop down menu and click on REA EQ. Let's open the plugin interface. This time we're gonna keep it really simple. Taking a look at the first band, let's go ahead and set this to a band and we'll leave the frequency to around 100. We're gonna give this a boost of around three. Next, we'll take a look at the second band. Let's drag this to a frequency of around 400 and then we'll give a smaller boost here. 
On the third band, we'll push this to around 1.6 thousand. We want to give a small cut here. And on our final band, we want to make sure the type is set to band. Let's set the frequency to right about 9,000. We're going to give a boost of around 3 here as well. Now what this does is it effectively adds more bass and clarity to your music and gives a much cleaner sound for your stream. This is one of the best tips that I can give anyone to improve their audio on their streams as it adds so much to the quality of your audio. That is all we're going to do with our audio today. Again, this is just an overview of things that you can do to really shape up your audio for your stream. Make sure to play around with the settings to your likings, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more stream tips and guides just like this one.